what the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Patty, take roll call, please. Gary. Deb. Here. <coughs> Ray. Don. Here. Here. Remind all the commissioners, turn on your microphones, please. Uh, anybody in the audience, if you have a cell phone, please put it on silent, not to interrupt anyone speaking. Do want to welcome everyone here today, guests, visitors, uh, media. First item before we enter the Agenda items, is there any uh, financial conflict of interest amongst the commissioners on any items on today's agenda? I have none. None. I don't either. Is there any non-financial conflicts of interest? No. None either. Uh, any additions or changes for today's agenda? I do have one FYI, which was in the packets. Uh, just a letter from SDSU. Uh, from the swine specialist, Dr. Bob Dollar. We'll read that here during the meeting. Any other additions or corrections to today's agenda? Hearing none, I entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> Opposed? Motion carries. Paul, would you shut those back doors for us, please? I think Jeff is doing it right now. All right. Uh, has everyone had a chance to review the November 8th commission minutes? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have uh, one. I believe it uh, needs to be a correction on it's page five of the minutes <clears throat> under the action 1844117. Um, Z, you mean? Uh, yeah, Z. Let's see. I believe it's that one. Let's get another one. Um, there's an, no, that's not it. I apologize. It's another one about the voting, how it was. Planning Commission 70780. Um, now I can't find it. Well, I apologize, Mr. Chairman. I cannot find what I thought was the mistake. It had to do with uh, carrying over the votes from the Planning Commission to this, um, and I don't see it right now, so pass out. Okay. Any other uh, questions or corrections to the November 8th Commission meeting minutes? If there are none, I'd entertain a motion. Move approval of the minutes. A second. Get a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. First item on the agenda will be our claims. Any questions on the claims today? No. If there are no questions <coughs> on the claims, I would entertain a motion to approve. Make a motion to approve the claims. Have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next item is District 3 Joint Cooperative Agreement. Uh, Patty, is this just a renewal of what we've... It's just a yearly. Yearly. We I know Greg is here, but I think Greg's going to talk a little bit later. So uh, any questions from the commission in regards to the uh, District 3 uh, agreement? If not, can I get a motion to approve? I make a motion that we approve the statement of extension to the joint co cooperative <coughs> agreement regarding District 3. A motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next is the South Dakota Department of Health contract. Similar story here, Patty? Yeah, it's just a year. And this is for uh, with Julie and Jen, yeah. the state yeah. nurses. Yeah. Any questions on the commission in regards to this <coughs> joint agreement? Move approval of the agreement. Got a motion. Is there a second? Second. 
Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, next on the agenda is the consent agenda. The consent agenda is made up of report department reports from the ambulance, auditor treasurer, mental, mental illness report, pooled cash report, register of deeds, sheriff's office, veteran service office, welfare. It includes a right of way for Nelson Ag Holdings and plats to be approved for Gunderson, Knutson, Leonard Smith Farming, Dennis Christensen Whitetail, Gunderson J.A. Gas, LLC, Doug Marquardt, and Matt Christensen, Crestview. Is there any items that need to be pulled from the consent agenda to be discussed? Otherwise, if there are not, I'd entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. I move approval of the consent agenda. There's a motion. Is there a second? <clears throat> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Paul. Got you early. Mm -hmm. I should be quick. <laughs> oh, uh, we got three things real quickly to go over. Uh, I wanted you. To, the first thing is is going to be the pre-disaster mitigation. What we're looking at doing is uh, there is a grant that we want to be applying for to be able to. District three works with us, with us real well uh, in helping us put this together. The grant or the, the to rewrite the plan in the next couple of years is, is eight thousand dollars of what we're applying for. Two thousand of it is, is our cost but a lot of our costs are what they call a payment in kind so we have a meeting it's worth so much you know things of that nature to where we we basically don't pay anything by the time we're all said and done but this is something in the next couple of years that we're going to be working on we have to apply for it now so in 2019 they'll see what they can award it to us and then we'll go ahead and start in 2019 2020. Uh, i have your document here for you guys to sign uh, to start with the county, once you approve and want to go on with the, with the project, we will then go to each town, townships, things of that nature to get them to see if they want to be part of the pre-disaster pre -disaster mitigation process. And you know, the, the more the merrier, excuse me. But right now we have most of the communities on it, a few of the townships belong to it. So, but it was just something that I wanted to bring to you. If you have any questions, I uploaded it. I believe you got a copy of the, yes. of the, the document here. Uh, if you have any questions uh, that I could answer, or if not, I, I ask that you approve that we go into the process of the pre-disaster mitigation process, grant process, excuse me. <coughs> any questions for Paul? For Paul? <clears throat> Sounds like a good deal. Yeah, I mean, right now, there's two places I think you approve it, Todd. There's two, two things we have right now. The town of Westville is getting a grant for generator for the lift station. And the Boy Scout camp was awarded about $900,000 to put in seven storm shelters out of the Boy Scout camp. And they all have, uh, it's all their money. I mean, they have to come up with 20% uh, to match it. And that's all, it could be payment in kind. Uh, we're looking at this next cycle, of maybe a gen some more generators for the county. But we're looking at individuals' towns to take that on, that process. But there's a lot of other things that we could be looking at. I want to get some of the township on board. Uh, to looking at roads and things of that nature to see what will and will not qualify, but we need to get this process going. Paul, the Boy Scout camp, we approved that. Was that a year ago? Yes. Or yep. It's even it, longer than that now. It might be almost a year and a half. Uh, it was finally, they had to go through a lot more hoops, if you will, because it's on uh, some of them, they wanted to make sure it wasn't on core ground. It's on reservation ground. They wanted to make sure there were no historical value sites. So they had to do a survey and a study, and it's just been kind of, everything got cleared here. We just had a meeting about three weeks ago with the state and the, and the, the federal officials. They're good to go. So they'll probably start seeing progress next year when it starts to warm up. Uh, their goal is to try to buy July to have three or four shelters in. And then- Pat, will you get that back door, please? It's, I think it's locked. Somebody's trying to get in. And then to, uh, by July, and then during their busy season, they will uh, kind of stop, and then in the fall, they'll start up again. 2020, they're planning to have them all done. You said nine of them, right? Shelters? They were awarded for seven. Seven. 
Yeah, I remember those. They were picnic shelters, and underneath it was a concrete bunker, essentially. Concrete bunker, showers, the whole nine yards. I mean, the, they're having water put out, electricity, but that's, I mean, that's all part of the process. They meet FEMA requirements, the shelters. Uh, and the pre-disaster mitigation process, if you will, is uh, has to be and follow federal regulations. So there's a lot of paperwork that goes along with it. Sure. But it, to me, it's a good thing uh, for everybody, for that matter. The city of Yankton got a generator a few years ago for their street shop, uh, things of that. You know, we're finding it all over. So the money is there, and it just seems like there's more and more money being given out for these kind of projects because they want to make, they want you to prevent rather than have to come in and fix. Uh, after the fact. Any other questions for Paul in regards to the uh, resolution here for the pre-disaster mitigation grant? If there is not, I'd entertain a motion. Make a motion that we approve the pre-mitigation disaster <coughs> grant application. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. The second item up that I have is a, a mutual aid agreement that uh, you maybe have seen. It is our region six, the region of the emergency that I, our county belongs in. Uh, region six consists of Beetle, Bonholm, Brookings, Davison, Hanson, Hutchison, Kingsbury, Minor, Sandbird, Sandburn, and our county. And with this mutual aid agreement, basically we're looking at doing it, and I send it to Rob. And Rob said it looked good. I mean, there was nothing, uh, you seen anything wrong with it. But in the event that if, if uh, my, our neighboring county that I just mentioned had a disaster and they needed some assistance from us or they needed to borrow a generator or something like that, we have an agreement in the first 12 hours. It's kind of free, but anything after that, they know they'll have to start paying for it if they needed me to come and help them or vice versa. If we have a major disaster and I need people to help work in the EOC, for example, because our people have been devastated because, or impacted, I should say. I can ha ask for help and have them come in and help me out getting things going, if you will, until things settle down. It's something that we've worked on in the last couple of years, and I finally got it wrote up in a document that we can share uh, amongst the, the, six, or the 10 counties within our region. And then the other side of it's gonna be is that when we get done, this can actually go to all the other regions. There's five more regions that we could help if it came to that. I think it's a really beneficial for us in, a, in the long run. Have we ever had to do this? No. It's always been kind of a, if I need help, you come help me, blah, blah. I've been over to Bonholm and helped them on some stuff, but that was, I got a phone call when helped them for a few hours or a few days. I mean, we went on the train derailment, and then I went up to Springfield when they had the windstorm yep. uh, to help them manage it and document their stuff. Now this is just a little more formal uh, means. So if something would happen to me on their incident, I am covered on their insurance, even though I have insurance getting there. But once I get there, then they kind of uh, take care of it. Any other questions for Paul in regards to the mutual aid agreement? We need a motion on this too, don't we, Patty? I get a motion in regards to the mutual aid agreement for emergency management. Um, a motion that we uh, approve the mutual aid agreement for the inter-county sharing of resources during emergencies or disasters. A motion, is there a second? Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> motion carries. The last thing I have, we talked about this, and I have to apologize to you, Todd. I didn't realize until I watched the video that you were here that day. So one media I missed this year. Yeah, and uh, when we talk about that tower, the old civil defense tower, yeah. I got to that. Yeah, that's okay. We did surplus that on August 7th. Okay, but didn't we have to, correct me if I'm wrong, we needed to get, Rob, you're going to have to help me here. Remember on that tower, we needed to get three people to give us an estimated value. I mean, Mr. Osdemore, I think I'm pronouncing his last name right, wants to know what we're doing with the tower. Because he's ready to, I mean, if we don't do something, we're going to get a bill again for it. And I'll have to keep it insured and all that stuff. You have to come up with a number of any three residents of Eaton County. Any three. But that's up to this body that needs to do that, correct? I mean. So you need, we need to give a value of that tower? Yep. Even though we have zero qualifications in valuing the tower? Uh, 
professional. And the reason we have to do that is But if it's worth nothing to us, can't we just scrap it for junk and just leave it on the property and if somebody wants to take it, he can have it? We have to determine the value of the home. Scrap price? I, is it made of scrap price? Is, Wait, it, is, it, is it made of metal? I mean, can we get yeah, it? it's metal. I don't know. I'd have to call the radio. Is this what they call the Genesec Tower over there, just off of 50 and going into uh, Deerfield Estates? No, it's the top. Well, it's the one that's on uh, Dennis Fieldmeyer's place, uh, oh. west of the Blue Water Tower or the oh. Blue Water Tank. Yeah. I was. I'm thinking it was a mile further. West or east? East. No, the big top, the tall one. Yeah. No, no, that's. No, it's further out. It's a 60-foot tower. That the the county acquired many years ago when they actually rebuilt Highway 50, and when it used to be gravel, and they made it into concrete way back. I probably don't even remember, remember, remember that. I don't. I remember I'm that dating myself. 1980s, Paul. I'm dating myself here. But when they, the the construction company used it there, and then they gave it to the county because then the highway department had their radio system on it, and the civil defense department back when Howard Hermanson was on it, they put a some system on it, and we've had it ever since. And then now we got, we were able to put ours on Napa Junction, working with uh, the Great Plains out there. So. So would there be any reason we just couldn't hire a local? Appraiser to appraise it. I, I'd recommend we hire Roger Wilcutt or one of those guys. We've done that before. When's the first, when is our rent due at eighteen hundred dollars? That's going to be the end of the year. Let's get this done. And our like the insurance is going to be due at the end of the year, or our renewal for our insurance and all that stuff comes the first of the year. Why don't you see if Roger will do an appraisal on this, or okay. someone can do an appraisal as a professional? get back to us by the next meeting if they won't do it it takes three citizens to do it we can just say it's just we can figure some out after in the first meeting in december okay is, is it an official appraisal enough instead of having three one will be good yeah. okay. okay okay i just needed some guidance <laughs> thanks paul you bet All right, uh, next item on the agenda, Mr. Henderson, District 3. Endorsement of an op Opportunity Zone re Revolving Loan Fund, proposal to the Economic Development Assistance Administration, excuse me. That's a big handle. That's very well, that's very descriptive, and I like to see that. Thank you. Yeah, it's the same term. What I'm asking the County Commission to consider this afternoon is a uh, request from the Economic Development Administration. Uh, EDA would like to have, I guess you could use the word endorsement, from the county on a proposal we've submitted to them to establish a regional revolving loan fund targeting designated opportunity zone census tracts. That's kind of a mouthful. But if you turn to the second page, you can see these red areas in our 16 county region that were designated as federal opportunity zones by the governor of South Dakota in April. And Yankton County has two of them. One of them is the Napa Junction area. The other one is kind of the west side of Yankton. And the Economic Development Administration uh, changed their regulations to say any area that's designated as an opportunity zone can qualify for our assistance. Great. What yes. Is the west side of Yankton or the east side of Yankton? I think it's, oh, excuse me, I think it's the west side. No. I think it, it is the west side. Napa Junction. South. Napa Junction is northwest, but, but, but the other one that's in, in Yankton, I think, is more on the west side of Broadway. Yes. Okay. So I don't want to, I mean, I could get you the exact. That's fine track details but isn't it through the map junction goes further south yes it extends south to, down by the lake area i believe it's a pretty big piece of geography in the county and what we're trying to do is take advantage of this eligibility then to recapitalize part of our revolving loan fund and eda requires a 50 50 match when you apply for rlf assistance Yankton area progressive growth because of the fact that these two opportunity zones would be in this area agreed to help match the money that we're applying for from the feds 
So YEPG generously donated $140,000 towards this thing. We're putting in 210,000 and EDA is being asked for 350. So the total package is $700,000. No one project out of this fund can get more than 25% of the money in the fund. So the money will be spread around these, these areas. But again, it's, an, it's a chance for us to get additional federal grant dollars. The application has moved through Denver, it's now in DC. And it's at the stage where they would like to have endorsements from the local jurisdiction saying that this idea is okay with them. And this counts, costs the county nothing? Nothing. Nothing. Does it obligate us to do anything? Nope. It just gives our endorsement? That's correct. And the 750 is for all of the opportunity zones? Yes. Or just the two and eight? No, all collectively. Yeah. So those are in Brule, Low Brule, Rosewood, Red... Rose yeah, they're, they're scattered. A couple yeah, of them are reservation areas. Right. Yep. This map is just your district, right? Just our planning district. Okay. There's 18 total in the state, correct? I think there's more like 24, 25. Okay. 25? Yeah. And Yankee yeah. County's got two. Yes, and, and, and something that I think you were aware of this, that the state, when they designated them, they had two zones that they could pick out as kind of discretionary, and Napa Junction was one of the two because they looked at that as an opportunity for future growth, and so it, it didn't meet the same criteria as the other ones based on income or whatever they were using, but they looked at that as something special. So you can feel good about that, that you had one of two in the whole state that were picked out for that purpose. And the governor gave us that blessing, correct? Yes. Yep. Now, in the future, we may be going for more money. Uh, the challenge with EDA is coming up with match. If we can ever cobble together more matching funds, we may go back down the road for another one. We were told by the Denver staff at EDA that this is the first time in the United States anybody's tried this, mm -hmm. using this opportunity zone as an eligibility. So we're kind of a guinea pig, but that's all right. Well, this opportunity zone is only months old, essentially. Isn't yes, it? they were established in April. So, so if you have any other questions about what we intend to do with the money, again, pod projects will have to apply to our revolving loan fund as anybody else would, and they'll have to meet our lending criteria. But hopefully we can get those dollars out. We have three years to get the money spent. And I don't see that as a problem. I think this is a great opportunity for Yankton and for expansion and continue to grow our communities. So I think it's a great idea. I Thank you. I agree. Economic development, another way to raise taxes without raising taxes. Raising, raising taxes. <laughs> raise money without raising taxes. <clears throat> Any, it, other, any, any other comments, Chris? No, I just say it's a very tangible way of taking advantage of this designation right now. Uh, the, the full value of the Opportunity Zone may come later when people actually invest in it, but right now this is the best we can do as far as finding a way to take advantage of it. Do we need a motion on this, Mr. <coughs> we will. Is there any other questions for Greg at all or comments? Patty, please approach the podium. The statement was made that, that no monies would be come out of the county, and yet how much money have we given to the Yankton Progressive? I mean, if part of the monies that we're donating to Yankton Progressive... Yankton Area Progressive Growth. Thank you. ...is part of this 140 k that he's saying, then it is coming out of the county. In a small amount. Nancy, would you like to speak to that? Thank you very much, Nancy Winandy, CEO of Yankton Air Progressive Growth. Um, our funding comes from a variety of sources. Um, the majority of our funding, $2.8 million, came from a campaign of investors from around the community. While some of that might be funding that has come through Yankton um, County, there's a significant amount of money that is not designated from Yankton County. So if you want us to be specific and say that any of the funding from the county would not be allocated to this project, we can certainly make that type of designation if there's not a level of comfort. But these opportunity zones are really a unique project for people to invest in Yankton, and as was mentioned by Greg, the opportunity for Yankton to have two of those is truly significant for us. So we're looking forward to take advantage of that, and we thank District 3 for their um, forward thinking and working with EDA to try and access additional matching funds for that. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. 
I don't see any reason why it would be, need to be separated. No, I, I, we invested in YEPG just for that purpose, for development in Yankton County. Mm -hmm. And this is a perfect example of good things that that investment has done for us, or will do for us. I think the small amount pays a number of number of dividends. And having the governor give us one of two discretionaries in, this, in the state of South Dakota shows that the governor is behind this. Makes good sense to me. Any other comments from the commission? I entertain a motion to for the endorsement of uh, District 3's revolving loan fund of the opportunity zones. And Mr. Chairman, I uh, recommend an, uh, endorsement of an opportunity zone revolving loan fund proposal for the Economic Development Administration. Yes, we can't hear you. She made the motion for. Made the motion to approve. Thank you. Is there a no, second? Motion is second. Any discussion? Uh, yeah. Are, are, do you have your your team working on preparations for taking advantage of this uh, in our geographic area? We've, we've been looking for projects, and we have a list that I can't share with you today, but we do have a list of potential applicants that may be looking at this. So we should be having some, uh, once it's approved, and we hope to get approved shortly after the first of the year. Uh, shortly after that, we'll be entertaining applications. So yes, we've been looking around for projects. And it's a, a gigantic opportunity for capital gains utilization. That's, that's the normal opportunity zone uh, program, yes, is for reinvestment of capital gains. And that would have no connection no. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion well, carries. Thank you very much. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate your partnership in this. You bet. Thanks, Greg. Do I need to sign that? Or that? You want me to send this to you? This one. No, that's for that. Okay. This is for Yes, if you can send that to me, that would be great. Okay. Unless you want to do it right now. Thanks, Greg. Thank you. <coughs> We're a few minutes early before the drainage board, which has to start at 4:30. Am I correct, Pat? So, um, at this time in the packets was a letter from SDSU Dr. Bob Thaller, dated November 9th, uh, addressed to the Yankton County Commissioners, the Yankton County Planning and Zoning, new and the newly elected commissioners in regards to the South Dakota odor footprint tool. I'll read the letter verbatim and it's also in that binder over there and there'll be copies on hand. Um, Bob states, it has been brought to my attention that at a recent Yankton County Commission meeting, I was quoted as saying the South Dakota State University has abandoned the use of the South Dakota odor footprint tool. This statement is incorrect as South Dakota State University is still supports, endorses the use of the South Dakota odor footprint tool. The South Dakota Odor footprint, footprint Tool provides estimates of odor footprint for livestock facilities in South Dakota. The key components to the odor footprint estimate are the, South, are the South Dakota County, the type of housing and manure storage, the surface area of the housing or manure storage, and whether there are external outdoor, excuse me, external odor control technologies in place, i.e. manure storage covers, biofilters, etc. While the South Dakota Odor Footprint Tool does not take into account all impacts of topography the site -specific and site-specific features like animal diet and management can have on the odor footprint for a particular, particular site, it does provide a starting point for discussion about odor impacts for the area surrounding a facility. The Odor Footprint Tool was widely accepted and utilized by many other land-grant institutions and in states including the University of Minnesota, the University of Nebraska, University of Missouri, Purdue University, and Iowa State University. The South Dakota Odor Footprint Tool was developed using the same research as the other universities and has been, a, and has been fine tuned for the individual counties in South Dakota. I, also, I am also including the following two reference articles from the American Society of Agricultural Engineers to provide further background and validation of the South Dakota Odor Footprint Tool. And those are noted here. 
Again, the South Dakota State University continues to support the use of the South Dakota Odor Footprint Tool and as a university accepted and science-based tool to be, be used in consideration for the responsible siting of livestock operations. If you have any further questions, you can contact me, Robert Thaler, at his email and phone number 605-695-6444. This was in response to Patty Graham Cow making a comment that SDSU has abandoned the odor footprint tool, which is not the case. So, and Patty, will you also send a copy of this to Patty Graham Cow? And you can see yeah, that documentation. So. All right. Now it's 4:30. Can I get a motion to go in the drainage board? So moved. <clears throat> second, I can. Your motion is second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. <clears throat> okay. Um, in front of us here, we have a couple of uh, drainage permits here with the board. So this uh, first one is Nelson Ag Holdings and, and Gusted, it's a partnership. Um, it was recommended for approval based on findings of fact dated October 23rd by the Drainage Commission. And the said property is legally described as the west half of the southeast quarter and the east half of the southeast quarter of section 11, Township 94, Range 55. Here and after referred to as Mission Hill North Township, County of Yankton, State of South Dakota. Um, all members present voted A for this project. Um, <clears throat> so this is an eight inch line. Uh, the reason why it's in front of the drainage board and being a public hearing is that it is a, uh, a partnership between two producers in which one of the producers does have the access or the blue line on its property. Um, you have all the easements in your packet. Um, it's about a, uh, what do we got here for total? I think we have almost um, 30,000 feet of pipe being put in. It's a pretty good sized project. It's an eight inch outlet. Um, the slope and the capacity in the blue line is sufficient. And we have uh, gone through the process and notifications and have had no comments negative toward this. I do have, um, like I say, easements were required. This is going into the blue line before the township road, and so no township requirements were, re were in this application. You have the site plan that's in the back of your packet. You take a look at it there. I think they do a good job um, in laying that out, and you know where the flow is, and, and we know where the outlets are, and uh, it looks like a good project from the commission standpoint. Any questions? Questions from the commission for Pat? I'm grateful for the fact that the farmers are talking to each other and getting along. This one worked out good. Yes. Drainage is working. <clears throat> Daryl, do you want to speak as uh, the applicant in regards to the drainage permit at all? Sure. Daryl Nelson from Yankton. Uh, Pat explained it pretty well. Uh, cooperation between two neighbors to get the water to the blue line should be a project that shouldn't have hurt anybody. And uh, actually, we're going to try and tie in an old clay tile line that drains into the ditch, probably 80 years old, and try and bring it direct to the blue line and get that water out of the ditch. So and I think that the neighbor to the east would appreciate that. So I think, think we got everybody on the same page anyway. So. Good to hear. I said try. I think we can do it. I'm pretty sure we can. But uh, that's great. So, Daryl, do you guys put this in yourself, or do you have a third party do it? I usually put it in myself unless I run out of gas here. <laughs> <laughs> can't imagine. Which, why. which has kind of been the case after this year's harvest. So, yeah. can't imagine why. I intend to do my end of it. I'm not sure what the guests plan on doing, okay. but they'll probably hire theirs done because I got enough on the table. So, gotcha. Thank you. Any questions okay. for Daryl at all in regards to his application? Thank you. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you. Any public comment for or against the uh, Nelson Ag Holdings and Gusta Trust drainage permit? If so, please approach. <coughs> Seeing none, we'll close public comment at this time. Any uh, questions at all from the commission for Pat in regards to this drainage permit? If there are none, <coughs> and entertain a motion. Okay, we have to make this clear. Um, the drainage commit or the drainage ordinance is separate from the zoning ordinance, and the drainage ordinance requests that the drainage board is a simple majority. 
It is not a super majority, so it doesn't, it just has to be a simple majority of the members voting. Okay, that's a drainage ordinance. That's what it needs to be for the drainage board. Move approval of the application. I have a motion, is there a second? Second. Any discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now it's not 445 yet. Expected to discuss that longer. <laughs> it's only 35 though. Not on my agenda. My agenda says 445. Yeah, mine does too. Hmm. to wait. Right. I bring this up. Focus Farms LLC drainage permit. Okay, this one is, uh, thanks for being patient. Sorry about getting the time off on that. Um, this was recommended for approval by the Drainage Commission based on findings of fact dated October 23rd, 2018. And uh, it's for said property legally describes the north half and the south half of the northeast quarter and the south half of the north half of the northeast quarter of section 23, township 94, range 57, and the south half of the south half of the northeast quarter of section 23, township 94, range 57, and 60 acres north of the railroad of the southeast quarter of section 22, 23, township 94, range 57. Here and after referred to as Ziskoff North Township, County of Yankton, State of South Dakota. The Planning or the Drainage Commission recommend approval um, unanimously. <clears throat> As your site plan shows, um, we have three different partners in this. This is Kokish and Kokish Farms. This I'm going to say is Nedved. Am I getting a nod on that? Is he out there? Okay, and then I believe this one would be the next one south will be um, it's Kokish. And then Novak. This one is Novak. Or is this Nedbed? And then the other one. So whichever one I got mixed up, Kokus, Novak, and Nedbed. Now take a look at your outlet. Instead of coming out here, the design is, is to come out here. And they have an easement from McDonald for this property to run it down over the surface into this blue line. And the reason why we did that is that this is a non-functioning culvert situation. That's why we've already got this wetland situation showing up. This culvert doesn't work very well. So we're gonna take it and run the water over here and there's a site plan and then it runs down this one and that is by easement. Um, you also see easements with all the landowners presently. So it's being initiated here. So this, this landowner has an easement from this landowner and this landowner and this landowner. Um, these landowners have a blue line on their property so they have the right to tile into it. And then, but since the catch here is, and we wanted to make this clear, that we understand that this isn't coming down the blue line, it's gonna run over here and come through here. So all of them had to get an easement from McDonald. We got that all done. And you said it's that's all put on together. The surface? Excuse me, that's on and the surface. And now it can allow to run on the surface. I've got almost a 4%, close to 5% grade there. And remember, it runs when it's, it's, it's actually 0.5 or 0.4, but it runs at 0.1%. Water will run on the surface at 0.1%. So we know that we have very good drainage there. It looks like a natural. Uh, yes. Yep. And it really is. You go there, it's got good slope. You can see it's cutting. His, his outlet will be here, go through the, through the culvert and out, and then this, he is responsible for erosion control. <coughs> so there can be no damage to the Janosek road from this operation. They're responsible. They're responsible for that. There's a culvert out of the road there. Yep. And there's a good culvert there. Is that a township road? Organized or unorganized? Ziskoff North is not. Is it? Unorganized. Ziskoff North is unorganized. Un? Un. 
unorganized. Any other questions for Pat? Okay, back out a little bit. Where, where does that... Uh... David, David, okay. I'll let public comment, but you're gonna have to come up to the podium and state your name, so, but one second. Does the applicant want to speak at this point in time? I don't see. The I don't case. see him. He's combining. There's Grandma trying to make get the crops in. Um, the applicant was here for the, for the commission meeting, and I can answer any questions that we have. And we certainly have very good findings for this. So. Did you have any positive, negative comments at the drainage commission? Um, no, I did not. The only comments we had was that there's an additional person that would like, and that would be this neighbor here, and this is Novak, Alvin Novak, and he is going to come forth at the next public hearings because he'd like to participate in this program too. But that comes at the next hearing and beyond that we did not get any comments, <coughs> positive or negative. Okay. Any questions for Pat before we open for public comment? All right, if there's any public comment this time, please approach the podium and uh, speak in favor or against or just ask questions. Uh, David Chop, I am. Um, I don't have any land adjacent to this, <coughs> but I know what's going on there. Where uh, would you Pat, yes. point out again? Because you, we didn't see that very good with your pointer. Where is he going to come start draining that his ground in down? Just do it over again because it, we, we couldn't see it very good. Okay, so it start, starts Pat, up here. Pat, you make sure you use the microphone? So it starts up here. Yeah, that's fine. And it'll come down through here, and then it comes down, and he actually will run a blue line in the, in the quick area, one on each side. We'll run a line on each side, okay. coming across here then, has to stay in, contained, it won't dump out here, has to run all the way across here and come out here with an eight inch outlet. And there'll be some other pipe and drainage here and here. Okay. And then this individual is going to carry some up here in this wet area and try and grab that, that little spot mm -hmm. there. Then this is going to grab all this. It's, he's got this gridded out here. And then Mr. Novak wants to connect in here and he wants to drain these two spots. But he has to come in next yeah, month. Yeah, that's next week, yeah. Next, yeah, you'll start getting letters on that mm -hmm. this week. Yeah. So that would be, but this currently is this lot, this lot, and this lot exiting here, which then with McDonald knowing that it's gonna come down that to that blue line. Where, where is it gonna be above surface? This is the question I have. Right there. Oh, just that down on McDonald's ground? Correct. After those two railroad culverts? Correct, correct. Okay, because he's gonna be uh, tiling He's going to have it underground. He's going to have a tile. He's going to have it all contained, all, all of his. Has to stay underground. No, okay. no surface okay. drains, that's, no surface I openings. To, that's, uh, that's the only question I have. Okay. Otherwise, I'm all for this. I have no problem with that at all. Okay. No surface drains. All exiting here. Thank you, David. Any else, anyone else like to speak in favor, against, or just comment on the Kokesh drainage permit? Seeing none, we'll close public comment on the Kokish Farms drainage permit. Any other, any questions from the commission of Pat in regards to this permit? I have none. No. I move approval of the drainage permit. Motion, is there a second? Second. Motion to second, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> motion carries. Can I get a motion to go into regular session? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Well, you're in regular session. Thank you, Pat. You're welcome. Uh, next item on the agenda, Commissioner Kettering, discussion of hiring a human resource manager. Well, last week, uh, last meeting, I handed out the uh, 
a list of suggested duties uh, that each our specialist might do <coughs> to improve uh, the HR. Don, you use the microphone, please. To improve the HR uh, process in, in the county, and suggested that uh, the county commission uh, review that, review that, uh, those items, and uh, if they have additional items, uh, to uh, bring them to attention at this meeting. I've looked over these and I've, I think they're very well done, Don. Um, I still would bet there's more things to add, but it's a starting place. It's a good place to start. <clears throat> you know, I, when I have the department head monthly meeting, this has been discussed probably for the last nine months, 10 months, and overwhelmingly supported by your, the department heads in the county and an HR person. Um, so, I think it's a very good step to continue moving the process forward. Well, then my suggestion would be that uh, I take uh, this list and uh, contact uh, some of the HR uh, resources in the community and ask for their uh, assistance in uh, reviewing and uh, bring back a more final copy at the next meeting. I think you can even add to that a little bit. Talk to District 3 as well. They've been instrumental in helping other parts of the county handbook out they may be able to help with this too maybe i'm mistaken but it'd be another resource to go after yeah. the thorough job description and <clears throat> any other i have nothing just keep no, going forward i would just say that any other <clears throat> companies that are our size with this number of people all have HR. It's just been a, a move um, in the last 15 years to maybe 20 that you, it's, necess it's necessary to have an HR manager for companies and businesses such as us and our size. And I think we're doing the best thing for our employees and we're also protecting ourselves. So I'm all in favor of it. <clears throat> One thing that did come up, and I know that'll be part of the process, Don, is is whether it's a brand new FTE full-time employee in the county or it's uh, able to absorb. I know that's part of be the part of the process, but that's a question that I've had asked of me by several people. But I know there's more to come on that, and I'll be that'll be part of the entire process. Any other things discussed on that? Nope. No. Nope. Okay. Uh, we're a little ahead of schedule here. Uh, next up on the agenda, Johnson Bridge update. Brian. Well, I was out there just prior to me coming into this meeting, and uh, there's a few snags uh, they ran into. Um, one of the issues that they're facing out there is the, the beams when they're welded together. Uh, they weren't perfectly welded, you know, in a perfect world to be flush all the way across. So they had to shim some of those. And then uh, when they broke the top open to expose the top of the beam, uh, much of the same thing. Uh, so they had to have some shim plates built. So that's why there was a delay. And in finishing that, and they're hoping with all the items are in place now and Everything's approved by the DOT and Clark Engineering, and they're going to be doing their first pour tomorrow, so one of them will be completed, and they'll expose the next one uh, on the be the west side of the bridge, and they're hoping to have it done by the end of next week. So it's fun and a few more. Well, like uh, speaking with uh, Mike Barsh, he's the uh, superintendent out there for Sioux Falls Construction or Journey Group. Uh, when they get the as-built plans, it's one thing, but the way it was built is another thing, so they have to, to field design everything, basically. So that's why it was a little more of a hiccup than they thought it would be. So one beam is done with two more to go. Right. So 
the first one will be poured tomorrow and they'll get the other one exposed that'll be poured right away at the beginning of next week and then they'll come back to the one that was you know we had two that were basically side by side they'll come back to that one uh, after that other concrete has time to cure over the weekend here okay well not the most exciting news hopefully was we we're hoping to tell us it's ready to open up but i know uh, with any type of construction and repairs right there's some wrenches that get thrown in the mix which we've faced with this the process whole time. Yep. with the uh, added uh, <clears throat> shimming and replacement how is that affecting the overall cost of the project there i mean the shims aren't very expensive so there there won't be a change order for that it's so we're still coming in under budget on this process correct. even though it's taking a little bit longer correct yeah time is the only essence that we're going over on essentially well, i hope the weather holds well they've had Great some good weather yeah. yeah i think you said too weather is not going to be too big of a factor in this project and the work may just slow them down a little bit right but it's so like when they go to pour the concrete even if they predict that it's going to get cold uh, they'll be heating that so it cures properly Any questions for Brian on Johnson Bridge? No. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Keep us informed as always. Yep. Second one here is we rented an excavator this summer. I think we kind of all know that. Um, all in total for rent, you know, and this was used for flooding and also a project that we had down by the lake. Uh, we kept the excavator a little longer on the account that uh, it sped up the process. You know, I'm going to use Mission Hill Road as an example uh, on completing, you know, a or a pipe like that. Uh, we had several of them. I mean, a lot of them in the Lesterville area. Uh, to point out, I I don't really have the number right in front of me, but I know what we paid for rent for that machine, uh, and we had that machine basically at the middle of July. Uh, to here last week, and we paid in total five or thirty-two thousand five hundred and forty-two dollars for rent. So that number again. Thirty-two thousand five hundred and forty-two dollars. And speaking with the uh, Titan, who is we rented it from Titan Machinery. Uh, if we would decide to buy that, they would put that money that we paid in rent towards that machine. So I guess what I'm asking of the board here is, is that something that we want to consider? What's new? How much more? Well, they'd, they'd have to bid it because it's still going to be right. over the $50,000 mark, but he's estimating anywhere between that eighty dollars and $90,000 range. Total? Total. And that includes the $32,000? Well, that would, you Above know. Above and beyond the $32,000. Yep. So it's about a hundred and. 105 ish. is what he's estimating it. This is for a maintainer? For an excavator. Excavator. So if we would have this excavator and we have, what, 400, 600, 800 culverts that are towards the end of their uh, life, could we then uh, uh, do culvert replacement? And much like we did this year you know we did a project down on rolling hills uh, we removed a bridge uh, with the proper permitting and and sizing from an engineer as far as hydraulics go um, and then the county crews ourselves, we did the work to install two culverts down there and much of that work could be done on a lot of these structures out there in this machine. Without that machine, we wouldn't have been able to do that type of work. Well, Yankee County's got the number one inventory of culverts in the state in the state of South Dakota. At what's the ball? What's the number roughly? With all of our culver culverts on our county system and our secondary roads, is around sixteen hundred. And that's that's so that's not the organized townships that's our system just the county so highway. unorganized townships and then, and then the roads that we take care of right 1600 culverts right 
And as far as budget goes, um, calculating, you know, this is without saying if we have a snowstorm or something, uh, calculating we're going to end the year with about $178,517.88. Left in your budget. Left in the budget. And we didn't look at the weather for this weekend, right? Well, <laughs> there again, oh, in a perfect world. But we would have the money to absorb that if we were to oh, choose to go that way. 2012. 2012. Hours? 2,272 when I took it back to Sioux Falls. Is that a lot of hours? Well, we, we've horse traded with some other counties. You know, we borrowed Bon Homes County, Bon Homes uh, Excavator last year, and that had over 7,000 hours on it. And they paid roughly about the same uh, a couple years ago as what we'd be looking at paying for this machine. Uh, in my opinion, they've got a bigger machine. Yeah, that's nice. But uh, with the smaller machine, it's a little more versatile. Uh, it can't do the work that the bigger machine can do, obviously. But the work that we'd be tackling, we could do with this machine. Because in my opinion, anything bigger than what we're, I feel we're apt to take on would need to have a crane. Crane. A crane. So that's like when we hire a hallway to, to come in and do a bridge. Hire the crane to do the bridge repairs or replacements. Yeah, right. Because a lot of these structures out there, much like down by the lake, uh, with the proper hydraulics and uh, the drainage study done, uh, we can we can put in pipes in replacement of a bridge. I know how well that you guys' work did out there in Rolling Hills. And a lot of work to do, and these guys almost make a, a temporary road for the time being for people to. Yeah, but there was no way in, or, or there was no other way out of there. Yeah. And we created a diversion to essentially keep the traffic flowing while we finished the structure. Well, knowing how many culverts we have and being the number one inventory, and sounds like it to me and probably a cost savings to have it. I wouldn't be opposed to putting it out for bid. Okay. Anybody else have any <clears throat> objection to it? I think it's a good idea. So that's what we'll move forward with. Will that take anything, move anything down on your list of capital items? Will it eliminate something that we would have needed more? Well, Yes and no. Um, you know, there's still the need for the motor grader that we have in the budget for next year. Um, that's but there, next year. That's next year. So, but there again, if you we look at the age of our motor graders, our oldest motor graders are 2003s with up over 10,000 hours on them. So. And those are used all year long, whether it's snow removal or it's in the summer, spring, fall. Those right. things are always going. Right. So, do do you know, Patty, if I need a motion to put this out for bid? There approved yep, for you to advertise. Yes. Yep. I move we authorize Brian to put this out for bids. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion oh, carried. Thank you, Brian. All right, next item on the agenda is executive session for personal matter, personnel matters and poor relief. Can I get a motion to go ahead? Mr. Chairman, before we do that, you know, it's an interesting thing with the votes and stuff that we have today, but, you know, Gary's not here. And he tromped out of the last meeting. And some would say he's, they thought they heard him say he quit. He hasn't called in to see whether he's coming back to a meeting or not. I'd, I'd like to know the status of what uh, Mr. Swenson's position is, and I'd like to have Rob uh, at our next meeting <coughs> address the, uh, the issue of absences. Hey. He knows it. I'm sure he can listen. 
it's all recorded. recorded. <clears throat> so we'll make that agenda item for next meeting. All right. Uh, anything else, Don? No. So can I get a motion to go into executive session for poor relief and personnel? So moved. Motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? We're in executive session. Uh, Brian's listed first. Rob. Can I get a motion to go back in a regular session? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, first matter in executive session, we uh, received and accepted the resignation of Highway Superintendent Brian Gusted. Uh, his last day will be uh, the 10th of December as he accepts new employment. Uh, matter of poor relief. I entertain a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, on the first case, um, we recommend a denial. On the second case, we approve with the payment plan. In the third case, we denied. And the fourth, no decision was made. So there's a motion. Second. Seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now, is there anything we, do we have to make a motion in accepting the resignation, Patty? Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay. in regards to uh, uh, Highway Superintendent Gusted, I entertain a motion to accept his resignation. I move we accept uh, Highway Superintendent Gusted's uh, resignation. Second. Yeah, motion is second. Any discussion? My only discussion is, or comments, is I wish Brian well on his new venture. Uh, He's tackled a lot of challenges, and this has been an extremely challenging year this year with, you know, for a highway department with all the moisture and rain we've gotten, and hopefully no snow this weekend, but <laughs> I don't know if that's gonna happen. But uh, he's had a lot of challenges and, and accepted them head on and really moved us forward in a positive direction. So I uh, appreciate his service to Yankton County. I can only echo that. All right, any other, any other comments? Uh, we have a motion, we have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, last item on the agenda is public comments. We have one individual signed up. Does anyone else wanted to speak? We'll let uh, Sherry uh, Lost speak. Uh, she's first on the list. And do want to remind the commissioners that this is a, a, a time for public comment. We can't enter in a discussion. And if it needs to be added to a future agenda item, we sure can do that, but. All right, thank you. Um, Sherry Lost, do I need to do my address? No. You're no, fine. okay. Um, I was on the uh, Township Task Force last year, and we had agreed to give an update at the second uh, November meeting only if Brian was 10% over budget on any of the townships. So I'm hoping this is a good sign that the budget went well this year. Um, but I do request that at the next meeting, maybe you should you could give a status because um, I think it was at the last meeting, it was stated they couldn't do salt application this year. I don't know if that's right or not, but I think Brian said it was too wet to put any salt at all for dust control. It was dust control. Yeah, dust so um, I'm sorry, I should say med chloride. Not, it's salt to me, med chloride um, for the public. But 
Um, so, so I know that was one of the most contentious things that we discussed during our township task force was the application of magnesium chloride. And, and if um, that allows our budget to stay in this year, that's a good thing. And then going forward to discuss a little bit more. So I do ask maybe at the, the next, the December meeting, we have some status on the budget for that, just for the public's knowledge. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thanks, Sherry. Thank you. <clears throat> Contact Brian in regards to that. Patty. With no other public comments on the agenda, uh, items for next meeting. Um, we'll have a HR on there again. And um, <clears throat> we'll have the, um, something else. With a we talked about... We talked about a couple already, haven't we? Wasn't there something? HR. Like, they, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought there was something. The gear, um, Mr. Oh. Chair, Commissioner Swenson thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. And um, the request from Sherry. The bids. Do we have anything? No, that will be. Well, uh, Brian the, has to have the thing. That'll, that, that. yeah. that'll take a couple of weeks bef before. So. All right, if there's no other items for the agenda, I entertain a motion <clears> to <throat> adjourn. So move. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We're adjourned.